Hello, welcome back to Going Walkabout. Today we continue working on the trip list. We're going to implement a pull to refresh and a slide to delete. In the previous episode, we worked on the trip list. We used a block to retrieve data from Firestore and present it the way we wanted to have it. In this episode, we'll continue on that. I'm going to implement a pull to refresh and a slide to delete. Now, first the pull to refresh. What seemed quite easy, but was, was a little bit more work than anticipated. Let's have a look what I did in the very first situation. So, what I did here is in the trip list that you might remember from the previous episode, I just embedded the whole list view here in a refresh indicator and on refresh we call the refresh. Now, this is simply going to uh, fetch the data again. So, there's no additional logic or anything, but it is to prove the point that we can go and refresh the list. So when I was running this, and let's see that in the simulator, so I have the simulator here and it all looks fine, but as soon as I start pulling on this, you see very weird rendering aspects. And after a little bit of uh, investigation, I figured out what was the problem. The problem is that I have this layout builder here. And as soon as I start pulling, that layout builder gets triggered and it starts changing my width and rebuilding the whole list, etc. So I needed to change that. And in order to do that, I had to get rid of my layout builder and do it in a slightly different way. I'll show you what I did for that. Now here you see what I actually did to uh, make it work. Um, first of all, in my builder of my uh, trip list, I did a media query instead of the layout builder because the layout builder has disappeared. And the reason is I only needed the width of the screen to calculate the height of the layout of those images, you might remember. And that width isn't changing when I pull to refresh or change anything. It only changes when I rotate the device. And actually, in that situation, the view got rebuilt anyway with the new height and it works fine. So I retrieved the width and then I removed my layout builder and the whole thing still works the same as it always did. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, this version because now we will see that it doesn't do the, the weird rendering aspects anymore because it doesn't get redrawn when you do the pull to refresh. So let's go to the simulator. And now we can pull and you see the refresh indicator appearing and nothing is happening. So if we really pull, we wait and it is refreshing. Now, the little flash you saw, that is because it fetched new data and it had to read all the screen, but it doesn't do the funny stuff anymore. So that was problem, sol problem one solved. Now let's move on to the slide to delete. Now, before I got into the slide to delete, I wanted to do one refactor first. You might remember that when I did the, uh, the trip, mod when I did the trip model, where is my trip model? It is here. I did a, um, I need the trip user, of course. I did here my list for user as part of my trip model. And I already mentioned that I should create a repository for that. So that's what I did in the next step before I started working on the slide to delete. So I will go and get that piece of code so that we can continue on that part, having a look at it. So as you see here in the trip user, I removed my function to get a list of users. And instead I created here a repository that encapsulates that. So the repository has a trip list for user and then my block in that return, if I go to my block, it is actually using that trip repository. Now in order to make the trip repository work, I first at the main of my app need to provide it. So when I was providing, initially I only was providing my app context, but now I use a multi-provider, so I can also use a proxy provider to provide my trip repository. And this is necessary because the trip repository needs the app context again. So this way I can create dependable objects and provide them. And then when I need my trip repository, I need that in my block. So my block, where is that, is here, gets it passed in through the uh, constructor, 
So when I create the trip block, I need to provide it. So if I create the trip block, I do that in my trip list here. And I say my widget builder, I get my app context, I get my uh, trip repository from the provider, and then I create my block with passing in the app context and the trip repository, and I init my block. So this way, my block can use that uh, trip repository, and there will only be one instance of my trip repository. So this refactoring was necessary to make the code a little bit cleaner, and also for me to improve the deletion of a trip and adding a trip, what will come later as well. So now let's go into the slide to delete and see what happened there. For that, I switch again to some additional code and I go back to my trip list again. Yeah. Now in my trip list, this is the list of trips, you used to see the refresh indicator. And now in my list view, I have embedded my cards. Remember, the layout has the cards in a slideable. Now, I didn't build the whole slide to delete myself because this is a Flutter favorable component and I use that. So in the pub spec, I added the component and it is my Flutter slideable to do all the hard work. And that makes it a little bit easier. And it's very simple to implement because you create an action pane, you set your secondary actions or your primary action, that's either left or right. I wanted to have them on the right side of the screen. Caption delete, need an icon, and when it is tapped, you need to go and do your action. And in my situation, the action is I build a dialogue for confirmation. So it's a simple a dialogue to confirm that you really want to delete because there is no way back when you do that. So do you want to sure, yes. Well, when you cancel it, you just pop the dialogue, and when it is okay, I delete it. And I call the delete on my block. So the business logic is not in the user interface, but it all goes to the business logic component. If I go to the block, then I call my trip repository. That's the reason why I wanted to create the trip repository. And I say, delete the trip user. And if the result is successful, I remove it from my list. And I show the list again by putting the new trip users in my um, on the sync again and the data stream changes and the list get re-rendered. Now note here that I don't refetch from the data store. So the data gets deleted through the repository and here I just remove it from my local instance of trips. And I do that to optimize and reduce the number of reads from Firestore so that it is a little bit more efficient. Now if we go into the delete trip user, that is a little bit more complicated. I have some error handling. If there is not an authenticated user, I don't continue. Um, I get some variables. I create a ref to the particular trip user record and I call the delete on it. Now, the logic of my application is in such a way that if you're just following, you only have to delete the trip user object. But if you're also the owner of the trip, you also need to delete the trip, and uh, that's what I do here. So if you're owner, I also call the trips with the document on the, uh, and the delete. Now, if anything fails, we get into this uh, catch uh, errors, and we return a data result. And that's also a little bit of an adjustment I did in my interface for the repository. Instead of returning directly the data or directly errors, I decided to return a data result object that is defined here that either contains data for a particular type, an exception, and a stack trace. And it's successful if the exception is null. So if you're successful and you saw me doing that, um, well, I did it in the block, of course. So if I go back to my block again, you see here if the result is successful, success, then I can take action. And I actually also use this when I get the list of data. So if I get the list, the trip user list for user, if it's result for successful, I get the data from the result and I add that to the sync so that it gets re-rendered. And this way I have a uniform interface on my repository and I can easily check for the result, whether it's successful or not. And I don't need to do the try catches everywhere. I can just do that in my repository where it actually belongs. So if I go here to my repository, 
there you see the try catches on the various actions to Firestore. So I've nicely encapsulated that and I return the data result. Now let's have a look to this one and the final result if it's all working. It takes a little bit of time to start again, but in the meantime, I can update you that I will not show you the real deletion because um, I don't want to mess up my test data and I don't have a record to delete yet because that's the topic for our next video, how to create a trip so that we can test the deletion. So you have to stay tuned for the next episode because that will be about creating a new trip so that we can also show and test the deletion here. Remember that. All right, here is the um, simulator again. And now we can see, we can slide and we can do the deletion. We can do the pull to refresh. And when we do the deletion, we get the confirmation. And as I mentioned, I will cancel it because that's what will be kept for the next episode. Now, I hope you like this episode. I hope you learned something. If you like it, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, Wait for the next one, it might be better for you. And I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.